Hey guys, it's Tom Cherryums with the FujiNet Project, and I wanted to do a video showing some upcoming functionality. The FujiNet will soon have support for CPM. CPM was an operating system for Intel 8080, Zilog Z80, Intel 8085, and compatible processors that was um, sold by Digital Research from 1973 until roughly about 1987, 1988, and comprised the majority of uh, operating system sales for 8-bit microcomputers, especially those that were not 6502-based. Uh, it was an early standard that was very much to be reckoned with. Um, many, many computer manufacturers supported it, especially in the S100 uh, sector. And um, it really represented, before uh, MS-DOS started taking over in 1981, uh, it represented a, an, one of the early, very successful microcomputer standards, operating systems, and application programming interfaces. We've used uh, an excellent uh, emulation layer called RunCPM, written by Marcelo Dantes and group. Uh, which is a high-level emulation containing a uh, Z80 core and uh, all of the bits and pieces to emulate CPM from a high level and it works extremely well. What I've had to do is basically take and write abstraction pieces to use the input and output functions built inside of the FujiNet. The um, end goal here is essentially to have uh, full integration with all FujiNet services. That means not only being able to read and write to uh, both local and network uh, disk services, but also to uh, have access to the printer emulation and to have access to the Wi-Fi modem from inside CPM, and as well as have uh, full-blown access to the network services that uh, are currently available on the 6502 Atari side as well. So how is CPM essentially set up in this case? To start off with, we uh, I'm showing here a file explorer window, which is a backup of my SD card that I currently have running in my FujiNet here. And you'll see that there is a folder here called CPM. If we go into it, we'll see a list of folders with letters. Each of these letters corresponds to a CPM drive letter. You can have from A to P, basically. If we go into one of these, you'll see that each one of these can have up to uh, 16 user areas which are the closest thing that CPM had to uh, subdirectories. There was no real hierarchical file system on CPM, just uh, 16 individual user areas numbered 0 to 15, and each of those gets their own folder. And from there, each of the binaries and files that would normally be on a disk image are put inside the folder. This makes it very easy to take and copy CPM uh, files from existing sources, put them in here. You can extract them off of disk images and you don't have to worry about being in the correct disk image format. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, sending the files over X modem to take uh, over serial link to take and bring the files over. You can just copy them into the appropriate folders and it will just work. Nothing special about there. Nothing really special about that. So with that, let's have a look and see what we, uh, let's see what this looks like. I have right here a DT80 cartridge, which I've inserted into my computer and turned on DT80. Now I'm using DT80 here, uh, especially for the bring up of CPM because it sends a command over the serial bus to automatically uh, something that I can intercept to automatically start CPM. It's my hope that we write other terminals uh, as well for different terminal types, especially because DT80 only supports ADM3A as a terminal type. But it's good enough to get started. 
we'll see right here that we have run CPM running. It's a custom CCP. You can run other CCPs. You can run DRI CCP 2.2. You can also run ZCPR 1, 2, or 3. Those are available as options, and there are a few others as well. Right now, we are sitting at drive A in user area 0. And if we do a directory, we can see the directory of drive A here. The CPM with the CCP is the way it's configured for this CCP here. Any files that are on drive A here automatically get searched if I type a command and it does not exist in any of the other drives. So it's a good place to put utilities. To show that uh, sequential reads work just fine, we'll take and type a text file here using the type command. And this particular CCP is quite nice in that it uh, basically gives uh, pagination by default. Not only does that work, but if we take a look, we see a couple of neat things in here, such for example, uh, Microsoft Basic. And right now, the file I.O. calls are not optimized. I can take and make them faster. Right now, the bottleneck is the fact that it is uh, opening and closing the file for each block that gets sent across. This is for atomic reasons, and I'm tr going to find ways to take and optimize it. Not trivial, but it's doable. We can see that basic works as expected. We enter a small program here. We can do a list. There it is. And we can see that it's running just fine. Go ahead, break, done. At which point, for example, we'll just hit system to go all the way back. And we find ourselves back at CCP here. Other applications run just fine as well. We'll go. Uh, there are other user areas as well, all over, so you can use the user command to go to different user areas to see different folders. Mumps, for example. User 2 for other, for other things, just keep, and you can keep climbing through. There's a whole bunch of, for the, for the file system that I have here, I have a ton of stuff in here, and it all works pretty well. We'll take and start adventure here just to test. I think this is adventure. We'll see. We're loading here, so uh, I'm watching the I'm watching the file stream across. Like I said, I will take and optimize this as best I can, as soon as I can. And welcome to the new adventure. Would you like instructions? Nope. You're standing at the end of a road before the small building down a gully. Okay, great. So we're, I think we're good. I think it's quit. Not exactly sure. Yes, go ahead. Done, done, done. Okay, and so on. User four. Let's have a look and see what's in here. I know I've got a copy of Zork here somewhere. I just don't know where the hell it is. There's all sorts of crazy stuff on the on what I have here. Did it, oh, there's a copy of Ladder. I'm kind of curious to see. Oh, there's Zork right there. Let's load Zork and see if it comes up. Seems to. Look at that. Ta-da. We're doing good. Although the terminal type is not quite right here, it's still thinking that it's a VT100 terminal type, and this is ADM3A, but that's fine. 
I will take and quit. Yes, go ahead and leave. And there we go. Um, so we'll go over to drive D to end this real quick. User area zero. And we'll find a copy of WordStar here that I've already run W install on to set my terminal type. In a few moments, it'll load up. And here we have WordStar ready to load. We'll load a document here, test text in this case. And here we are, WordStar. WordStar working just as expected. You can move around, do what you need to do, etc., etc. We'll go ahead and quit. Because not all my IO functions are working exactly like they're supposed to. So, I mean, as you can see, once this is actually fully running, you'll have access to um, a whole bunch of uh, new, you know, a whole bunch of applications you wouldn't have otherwise access to, with on average a lot more memory available for data. So, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is coming. I'm working on this as as fast as I can to get all of this up and running. This has been a very chaotic weekend, and uh, finally got everything starting to breathe quite nicely. And so I wanted to show you guys. So, uh, until next time, guys, have fun.